70s and we had said we need a, a means of communication. So I thought, well, why do we just need a means of communication? Why don't we just create a newsletter? So what year was this? 1973, mm -hmm. I typed news from the natives. And there's actually, <laughs> is that notes from, is that the same one, is that it? That's an evolution. Okay, oh, yeah. so. We started with news from the natives and we, we called it that because we had all been treated as natives that someone else, those legitimate white anthropologists, they were supposed to study us. We weren't supposed to study ourselves. And our statement was, you know, we've been treated as natives. We're going to claim the terminology and we are going to speak for ourselves. We are going to give mm. you our news. Um, and so I was the editor for a while. I don't know why I ceased to be the editor. And then I became the editor again. And I don't know why that happened either. <laughs> <laughs> but we went from my little typed version with the artwork done by the husband I had at the time. Mm -hmm. And one of our rubrics that we all thought we is Jerome Wright, Carol Henderson Tyson, Beverly Bruce. Huh? Um, I contacted the three of them and said, let's get together, come over to my little graduate student place, and we need to do a newsletter. Um, and we did. And our favorite rubric, all of us, was what we call with respect to our elders, respect mm. in both sense. So about finding out that we had an intellectual tradition, that we mm -hmm. had intellectual elders as anthropologists. And you know, we were paying our respects to them by acknowledging their existence. So that's where we started. So in some ways, the cite black women or the citation of black anthropologists actually began there, mm -hmm. is the recognition. You know, so this is not a new thing. No. It, it, it <laughs> sort of is part of the origins of transforming. Mm -hmm. Okay. Oh, yeah. And so in the first issue, we promised that we would do that. And in the second issue, we began to do it. So we began by profiling W. Montague Cobb, physical mm -hmm. anthropologist. And our issue was we need to identify our elders so we'll know we have an intellectual tradition. Mm -hmm. And yesterday, at the, at the um, mm -hmm. that session right. yesterday afternoon, there were still young African-American anthropologists saying, I didn't know <laughs> that we had an intellectual tradition. Mm. 50 years later, they're saying the same thing that we said 50 years ago. Wow. Amazing. And I was thinking of one of the things I was proud of um, having accomplished uh, for African-American anthropologists. And what that, that act was, I mean, in addition to stimulating the creation of the newsletter that then evolved to notes from the ABA that then further evolved into the Referee Journal, Transforming Anthropology. Mm. One of the things I got done was I got St. Clair Drake, <laughs> wonderful elder, to write. Mm. I mean, he talked a lot. He, and he, had, he had so much experience in so many places. Um, and I got him to write three articles <laughs> wow. So to put down some of you know some of what he some of the oral tradition to put it into the written tradition, and some of it is in transforming anthropology. Those are the notes the where he wrote about black anthropology, black studies. He uh -huh. was okay. Yeah, and there are three iterations. Yes. Mm -hmm. The first one was in an issue, uh, a special issue of the Anthropology and Education Quarterly that I edited, oh. and the second was in an issue of The Black Scholar that Johnetta Cole and I co-edited, and the third issue was an occasional paper, I believe, um, by the ABA, prior to transforming as transforming. Mm. So I guess it was part of the transformation. I was just thinking, I went to lunch with Drake one day, I went to lunch at noon, I got home at 9 p.m. <laughs> because every time I would think it was the end of the conversation, he'd say, and by the way, well, <laughs> and then we were off for another hour or two. But I couldn't say I have to go because it was so fascinating. And he was every place. You know, well, when, when I was in Ghana, well, that was, you know. <laughs> wow. When I was in, when I was, it was such a privilege to spend that time with him. Oh. Yeah. 